chatting with Purple Collar Life. We've got a lot to do today. We've got a little bit of a repair to make here on the John Deere with the snow plow, but mainly today's video is talking about rounds and how quickly do rounds season versus split firewood. My preference is always to split the wood to start the seasoning process, but I want to talk to you a little bit about rounds that have been sitting for over a year and how seasoned they are even as rounds. We'll take a look at that as soon as we take a look at the John Deere. The other day when I was plowing, I noticed this chain was just hanging down through underneath the plow. And I knew this chain is used to lift the plow. When I tilt my loader back, that's what lifts the uh, angle of the blade. And what's supposed to be here is one of these galvanized, uh, kind of like a clevis hook. And I got a replacement that I think will work. The trouble with, with this type of system is that there's a lot of vibration that happens on this snow plow. You know, the tractor's vibrating, the plow's vibrating, and this type of a system, I'm gonna need some help from you guys letting you know how you keep these pins in place. Because when I screw this in and tighten it up, tighten it as much as I can, I can even use some pliers here to tighten it up, but there's so much vibration and there's nowhere over here to put a pin through it to keep it from vibrating out. So I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to keep these from coming out. Maybe you guys have suggestions. Maybe I put a piece of wire through this hole and then kind of wrap it around this section and maybe that would keep it in place. But now that my chain is reconnected, whenever I lift my blade up, I should be able to tilt the loader back to kind of angle the blade a little bit different angle so it's not facing like this, it can be kind of tipped up. It also helps when you're lifting this up off the ground, this chain pulls taut and that keeps the blade from hanging so low and it also keeps all the weight off of these pins when you're lifting off the ground. So now we're inside the 2210. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about glow plugs. I mentioned in a previous video that there is no glow plug system on the 2210 got several comments about the fact that there actually is one. Now, I've read all through the manual. I can't confirm or deny that there is a glow plug system, but here's the advice that several people gave. Some people said, lift up on the PTO, which will not let the uh, tractor engage. So when you turn the start key, as soon as you twist here, you hear that clicking noise. Some people said that's the glow plugs working. Other people suggested put the tractor in low range or in gear. Same type of process, turn the key. You hear that clicking? Again, some people are saying that's the glow plugs. Let's see now if we did, have we've done that a couple times. It is pretty cold out, it's about eight degrees. Let's see now when we try to start up if it starts any easier. I would say yes, that, that did seem easier. It didn't turn over nearly as long. So maybe you all are right. And that is the glow plug system that's just not described in the manual at all. I had done a previous video about the uh, Ranger repair. The all-wheel drive system hadn't been working. Had it all fixed, all new parts. But unfortunately, I've just discovered that my all-wheel drive system, again, is not working this winter. No front wheel pull at all. No matter how I have the settings. I did a video on how this works, but you've got single rear wheel, lock rear axle all-wheel drive i'm just not for some reason able to get that all-wheel drive to engage the back wheels can spin and spin in this deep snow and the front wheels never pull so i can't use the ranger to tow the uh, log splitter back but that's okay 
That's why we have alternatives and we adapt and overcome. So today we'll use the Honda Foreman. You can see we've got the split fire attached to the back of it. it. Actually might work out okay because we're going through some pretty deep snow. I've got the plow here on the front of the Foreman. Can kind of clear a path as we're going and that might actually work better. If you'll recall, I've had these rounds covered up now for a while since the first snowstorm when we got 15 inches. So what I'd like to do is uncover these, try to keep the snow off of them as much as I can. So this stack of rounds and those rounds behind have been sitting out for over a year. I had a previous video I checked. One of the nice things about making this videos is Kind of documentation of when things happen this row of rounds and the front of this have been here since at least december 4th 2020 so over a year we do have some cracking and the question is have they seasoned all as rounds my preference is always to split them and then season them but let's see if any of this time counted as seasoning we'll split them I've got my favorite moisture meter here with the nice big display. We'll check the moisture content, see if this is ready to burn or how much time we think it's going to take to be ready to burn. go just by the ends here they look nice and dry let's split them see what we get So I split a couple more of those rounds, a couple observations. That back row of wood has been sitting out well over a year, probably a year and a half, maybe even two years. And the outside of it is actually getting a little soft. So I'm glad to get it split right now. I'll take it right in and burn it. Amazingly, sitting there as rounds all that time, again, I never thought that wood would season in the center without being split, but we are at 12.1 on that one and it looks nice and dry you can't feel any moisture in it 13.0 I don't know if you're going to see that in the sun glare or not 13.0 12.3 so yeah that's why I'm loading these right on the back of the four-wheeler I'm gonna go ahead and take these in right to my inside wood pile right now this is wood I can put right in the wood burner and, and uh, go ahead and burn. And glad to be getting it out of the pile because like I said, this outer edge is aging pretty quickly. I don't know if you can see the deer coming in in the background, but they're coming in because they've heard equipment running. They think that means I put corn out for them. 
it's hard for them right now. You know, we have probably 20 some inches of snow on the ground. It's hard for them to find nuts and uh, food underneath that snow. So they appreciate that we bring some corn out to them. I'm gonna go ahead and load this up. If the uh, four wheel drive and the Ranger were working, the Polaris Ranger, this would be a perfect opportunity to load the wood straight into the back of the Polaris. As it is, I'll just have to stack it carefully here on the back of the four wheeler and hope that when I drive down to the basement door, it doesn't fall off. I have to make more trips with less material. So there you go, proved myself wrong that wood does not have to be split to season. Um, I wouldn't still call that best practice. I think best practice is still to split the wood, let it season faster, get that air across the surface a little bit better. If you like videos like this, make sure you give us a thumbs up, comment down below, share with your friends, and if you're not already a subscriber, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time.